So Brian, how can a food manufacturer determine the next steps to become more sustainable? That's a great question, Mariana. Thank you for asking. When it comes to sustainability, there are three main areas that I would suggest somebody look at. The first area is going to be waste reduction. Uh, the second area would be material improvements. And then the third area is going to be efficiency improvements. So let's take a look at waste reduction. Um, when it comes to a, a food manufacturer and you're producing a product, one of the things that is easily overlooked is waste that comes out of your equipment. When you're creating a product and you have contamination in the seal, that is that is such an easy to have happen situation. That contamination in that seal area will create what's called a channel leaker. It might look like it's okay, you might think it's sealed, but the chances are that that's actually gonna be a leaking package. And depending on how susceptible your product is to oxygen transfer um, or to moisture transfer, uh, you're gonna have a real detrimental impact on your product there. And so then what's gonna happen is you could, with that with that panel leaker, you're gonna end up losing not just the packaging material and not just the product that you put there, but if you think about it holistically and you think about the whole chain, if that gets out your door, you've paid for the packaging, you've paid for the product, you've paid for the labor to package that, you've paid for the energy on your machine to pay, package that, you've paid for a gas mix if you've got a, a modified atmosphere, transportation costs, etc., And then eventually it will get all the way to, could potentially get all the way to your consumer. And if it's a product that's no longer good, then it harms your reputation. And you have the, 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 the situation of dealing with your retailer to get that back. So we wanna reduce that. We wanna make sure that you look at that equipment, you maintain that equipment, you buy the right OEM parts, and you've got good service technicians coming out and helping you and your maintenance team to maintain that equipment to prevent that contamination in the seal area and ensure that you get good sealed packages out the door. The next area that people want, want to look at, and it seems to always get all of the attention, is in the material improvements. And there's three main areas that I would say that are sustainable efforts when it comes to materials. And these are gonna be recycled materials, they're gonna be material reduction, and they're gonna be recyclable materials. So when you look at these a recycled materials, something that's already been used, and there's post-consumer and there's post-industrial, you have to pay attention to the, what, what your recycled content is and what your goals are. And you have to also understand what that impact will be on your product and on the performance of the packaging. So that's important to understand. And when you look at material reduction, less material, what doesn't get used, doesn't end up in landfills, doesn't have to be recycled. It's a great story. The challenge to that is that if you go too thin on the materials, it might not support and protect your product that you're trying to package. And if that happens, then it's actually not helping and it's not being more sustainable. It's actually wasteful because then you've wasted the product and you've wasted the material and all the energy associated. And then the the third area would be those recyclable materials. Those are gonna be the things that are gonna be mono materials, like your shampoo bottles that are gonna be all one one polymer, that when it gets melted down, it could get repelletized, put back into um, that stream again. The problem with that is that not every material is gonna have all the properties that your package will need. You may need a higher oxygen barrier that you're gonna get from one particular polymer, you might need a better seal property, and you might need a better moisture barrier. And so that's why oftentimes you end up with mixed multi-layer structures. So recycled material reduction or recyclable materials, while they're good, they're not the only answer to sustainability. What about efficiency improvements? How can that contribute to a more sustainable production line? That's a great question and, and thanks for asking it. Um, but honestly, when it comes to efficiency improvements, it's easily to overlooked, oftentimes it's overlooked but it can be one of the more impactful areas of sustainability. The goal here is to produce more with less. So if you can produce more product on the same equipment, on the same shift, and on the same floor space, then you're miles ahead. Um, so sometimes that means that you need to properly maintain your equipment. We, ha we have examples of customers that we've helped them with uh, maintaining their equipment and seeing an efficiency improvement of 20% or more. We also have examples of maybe it's a generational thing on your equipment and it's running as well as it can, but it was an older generation of equipment that wasn't designed to run as efficiently and produce as much. As the case with a recent customer where we replaced three pieces of equipment with a single high efficiency Waldner dosamat machine. Now they're able to produce about 30% more in less floor space with less labor 
on the same time on their daily shift schedule than they were before. That's a huge win for everyone involved. Oh, wow. This is really interesting, Brian. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you want to learn more about sustainability in your production line, contact Walner North America, walner at wnapt.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.